The human history of Hawaii includes phases of early Polynesian settlement, British arrival, unification, Euro-American and Asian immigrators, the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy, a brief period as the Republic of Hawaii, and admission to the United States as Hawaii Territory and then as the State of Hawaii. Discovery and Settlement The earliest settlements in the Hawaiian Islands are generally believed to have been made by Polynesians who reached Hawaii using large double-hulled canoes. They brought with them pigs, dogs, chickens, taro, sweet potatoes, coconut, banana, sugarcane, and other plants and animals. Several theories describe migration to Hawaii. The one migration theory suggests a single settlement. A variation on the one migration theory instead suggests a single, continuous settlement period. Several multiple migration theories exist. One variation suggests that the original migration could have been followed by settlers from the Marquesas Islands, and then later by Tahitians. Numerous accounts describe possible landings by Europeans, Chinese and others long before the arrival of Captain Cook. However, none have been documented with certainty. On January 18, 1778 British Captain James Cook and his crew, while attempting to discover the northwest passage between Alaska and Asia, encountered the islands, surprised to find anything so far north in the Pacific. He named them the Sandwich Islands after the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Members of this expedition described the population of the islands as abundant, handsome and healthy. Unfortunately the British brought many new infectious diseases to the islands, in particular tuberculosis and venereal diseases that quickly propagated through the locals. In 1786, seven years after Cook, a French frigate arrived in Hawaii and reported that most of the islanders were very sick. By 1832 only 130.000 remained. Kingdom of Hawaii Formation of the Hawaiian Kingdom Kamehameha united the islands into a single kingdom for the first time in 1810 with the help of foreign weapons and advisers. The monarchy adopted a flag similar to the one used as the present flag of the state of Hawaii, with the Union flag in the canton and eight horizontal stripes, representing the eight major islands. In May 1819, Prince Lee Holiho became King Kame Hum Ha II. Under pressure from his co-regent and stepmother, Kayayume Nu, he abolished the cap system that had ruled life in the islands. He signaled this revolutionary change by sitting down to eat with Kayayume Nu and other women of chiefly rank, an act forbidden under the old Sistema Euro CEO Kikuro Kalani, a cousin who thought he was to share power with Lee Holiho organized supporters of the CAP system, but his forces were defeated by Kayayumenu and Lee Holiho in December 1819 at the Battle of Kuomo. Imperial Russia In 1815 the Russian Empire affected the islands when Georg Anton Shekarensi FFER, agent of the Russian American Company, came to retrieve goods seized by Kamayali I, chief of Kauai Island. Kamayali I signed a treaty making Tsar Alexander I protectorate over Kauai. From 1817 to 1853 Fort Elizabeth, near the Waimea River, was one of three Russian forts on the island. France In the early kingdom, Protestant ministers convinced Kamehameha to make Catholicism illegal, deport French priests and imprison native Hawaiian Catholic converts. In 1839 Captain Laplace of the French frigate Arta copyright missailed to Hawaii. Under the threat of war, King Kamehameha III signed the Edict of Toleration on July 17, 1839 and paid $20,000 in compensation for the deportation of the priests and the incarceration and torture of converts, agreeing to Laplace's demands. The kingdom proclaimed that the Catholic worship be declared free, throughout all the dominions subject to the King of the Sandwich Islands. The members of this religious faith shall enjoy in them the privileges granted to Protestants. The Roman Catholic Diocese of Honolulu returned and Kamehameha III donated land for them to build a church as reparation. In August 1849, French Admiral Louis Tromelin arrived in Honolulu Harbor with his ships La Porce Vanti and Gassendi. De Tromelin made ten demands to King Kamehameha III on August 22, mainly that full religious rights be given to Catholics. On August 25 the demands had not been met. 
After a second warning, French troops overwhelmed the skeleton force and captured Honolulu Fort, spiked the coastal guns and destroyed all other weapons they found. They raided government and other property in Honolulu, causing $100,000 in damages. After the raids the invasion force withdrew to the fort. De Tromlin eventually recalled his men and left Hawaii on September 5. Great Britain On February 10, 1843, Lord George Paulette on the Royal Navy warship HMS Acaris Fort entered Honolulu Harbor and demanded that King Kamehameha III cede the Hawaiian Islands to the British Crown. Under the guns of the frigate, Kamehameha stepped down under protest. Kamehameha III surrendered to Paulette on February 25. Where are you, chiefs, people, and commons from my ancestors, and people from foreign lands? Hear ye. I make known to you that I am in perplexity by reason of difficulties into which I have been brought without cause, therefore I have given away the life of our land. Hear ye. But my rule over you, my people, and your privileges will continue, for I have hoped that the life of the land will be restored when my conduct is justified. Done at Honolulu, Oahu, this 25th day of February, 1843. Kamehameha III. Kakoluoe. Jarrett P. Judd, a missionary who had become the Minister of Finance, secretly sent envoys to the United States, France and Britain, to protest Paulette's actions. The protest was forwarded to Rear Admiral Richard Darton Thomas, Paulette's commanding officer, who arrived at Honolulu Harbor on July 26, 1843 on HMSA Dublin. Thomas repudiated Paulette's actions, and on July 31, 1843, restored the Hawaiian government. In his restoration speech, Kamehameha declared Wei Mao Kao Kaiye Aina I Ka Pono, the motto of the future state of Hawaii translated as the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. Kamehameha family, dynastic rule by the Kamehameha family ended in 1872 with the death of Kamehameha V. After the short reign of Luna Lilo, the House of Kalakaua came to the throne. These transitions were by election of candidates of noble birth. Princess Kaulani tried very hard to prevent her country from becoming part of the United States. United States, American Protestant missionaries settled in Hawaii at the beginning of the 19th century and quickly gained influence and wealth. They prohibited local traditions they disliked, like the hula or surfboarding. Reverend Amos Star Cook, who arrived in 1837, set up a school to educate the future monarchs. When one of his pupils rose to the throne, Cook was appointed unofficial advisor to the king in 1843 and from this position devised a land reform that allowed foreigners to purchase land from locals in order to plant sugarcane. Cook and other missionaries became big landowners and sugar producers, and got control of the economy. The Reciprocity Treaty of 1875 between the Kingdom of Hawaii and the United States allowed for duty-free importation of Hawaiian sugar into the United States beginning in 1876. This further promoted plantation agriculture, which was in the hands of foreign whites. Hawaii ceded Pearl Harbor, including Ford Island, together with its shoreline and four to five miles of land adjacent to the shore, free of cost to the U.S. The U.S. demanded this area based on an 1873 report commissioned by the U.S. Secretary of War. Native Hawaiians protested the treaty on the streets until the revolt was suffocated by U.S. Marines. The treaty also included duty-free importation of rice, which was by this time becoming a major crop in the abandoned taro patches in the wetter parts of the islands. This led to an influx of immigrants from Asia needed to support the escalating sugar industry and provided the impetus for expansion of rice cultivation. Water needed for growing sugar cane resulted in extensive water works to divert streams from the wet windward slopes to the dry lowlands. Overthrow of the Kingdom In the late 19th century the dominant white minority overthrew the Hawaiian Kingdom and founded a brief republic that was finally annexed by the United States. Bayonet Constitution and Wilcox Rebellions, in 1887 members of the American white minority, which held most of the important government positions by that time, founded the Reform Party and an armed militia, the Honolulu Rifles. That same year, 
the Honolulu Rifles and a group of cabinet officials and advisers to King David Kalakaua seized the royal palace and forced the king to promulgate what is known as the Bayonet Constitution. The impetus was the frustration of the Reform Party with growing debts, the king's spending habits and general governance. It was specifically triggered by a failed attempt by Kalakaua to create a Polynesian federation and accusations of an opium bribery scandal. The 1887 constitution stripped the monarchy of much of its authority, imposed significant income and property requirements for voting, and completely disenfranchised all Asians. Three-fourths of the votes were assigned to whites, which included all American residents thanks to a special rule from the U.S. State Department. Native Hawaiians felt the 1887 constitution was imposed by the foreign population because of the king's refusal to renew the Reciprocity Treaty. The treaty now included an amendment to permit the U.S. Navy to establish a permanent naval base at Pearl Harbor on AR. According to bills submitted by the king, foreign policy would include an alliance with Japan and supported other countries suffering from colonialism. Many native Hawaiians opposed a U.S. military presence in their country. A plot by Princess Lily Wokalani was exposed to overthrow King David Kalakaua in a military coup in 1888. In 1889, a rebellion of native Hawaiians led by Colonel Robert Wilcox attempted to replace the unpopular Bayonet Constitution and stormed the Ailani Palace. The rebellion, known as the Wilcox Rebellions, was crushed by the Honolulu Rifles. When Kalakaua died in 1891 during a visit to San Francisco, his sister Lily Wokalani ascended the throne. Queen Lily Wokalani called her brother's reign a golden age materially for Hawaii. 1893. According to Queen Lily Wokalani, immediately upon ascending the throne, she received petitions from two-thirds of her subjects and the major native Hawaiian political party in Parliament, Hui Kalei Aina, asking her to proclaim a new constitution. Lily Wokalani drafted a new constitution that would restore the monarchy's authority and the suffrage requirements of the 1887 constitution. In response to Lily Wokalani's suspected actions, a group of European and American residents formed a Committee of Safety on January 14, 1893. After a meeting of supporters, the committee committed itself to removing the Queen and annexation to the United States. United States Government Minister John L. Stevens summoned a company of uniformed U.S. Marines from the USA Boston and two companies of U.S. sailors to land and take up positions at the U.S. Legation, Consulate and Orion Hall on the afternoon of January 16, 1893. The Committee of Safety had claimed an imminent threat to American lives and property. The Provisional Government of Hawaii was established, led by Sanford Dole, to manage the Hawaiian Islands between the overthrow and expected annexation, supported by the Honolulu Rifles White Militia Group. Under this pressure, Lily Wokalani abdicated her throne. The Queen's statement yielding authority, on January 17, 1893, pleaded for justice, I Lily Wokalani, by the grace of God and under the constitution of the Hawaiian Kingdom, Queen, do hereby solemnly protest against any and all acts done against myself and the constitutional government of the Hawaiian Kingdom by certain persons claiming to have established a provisional government of and for this kingdom that I yield to the superior force of the United States of America whose Minister Plenipotentiary, His Excellency John L. Stevens, has caused United States troops to be landed at Honolulu and declared that he would support the provisional government. Now to avoid any collision of armed forces, and perhaps the loss of life, I do this under protest and impelled by said force yield my authority until such time as the government of the United States shall, upon facts being presented to it, undo the action of its representatives and reinstate me in the authority which I claim as the constitutional sovereign of the Hawaiian Islands. The provisional government sent members of the Missionary Party to Washington to negotiate the Annexation Treaty, which was signed on February 14, 1893. President Benjamin Harrison, who had just lost the presidential elections, promptly submitted it to the Senate for ratification but then an envoy from the deposed Queen arrived in Washington and made the case that the dethroning and annexation were illegal. Senators opposed the ratification of the treaty and President-elect Grover Cleveland commissioned an investigation into the events of the overthrow that was conducted by former Congressman James Henderson Blunt. 
The Blunt Report was completed on July 17, 1893 and concluded that United States diplomatic and military representatives had abused their authority and were responsible for the change in government. In the meantime the leper war on Kauai was suppressed by provisional government troops. Minister Stevens was recalled, and the commander of military forces in Hawaii was forced to resign. Cleveland stated substantial wrong has thus been done which a due regard for our national character as well as the rights of the injured people requires we should endeavor to repair the monarchy. Cleveland further stated in his 1893 State of the Union address in that, upon the facts developed it seemed to me the only honorable course for our government to pursue was to undo the wrong that had been done by those representing us and to restore as far as practicable the status existing at the time of our forcible intervention. Submitting the matter to Congress on December 18, 1893, after provisional President Sanford Dole refused to reinstate the Queen on Cleveland's command, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee under Chairman John Morgan continued investigation into the matter. On February 26, 1894, the Morgan Report was submitted, contradicting the Blunt Report and finding Stevens and the U.S. troops not guilty of any involvement in the overthrow. The report asserted that, the complaint by Lily Wokalani in the protest that she sent to the President of the United States and dated the 18th day of January, is not, in the opinion of the committee, well founded in fact or in justice. After submission of the Morgan Report, Cleveland ended any efforts to reinstate the monarchy, and commenced diplomatic relations with the new government. He rebuffed further entreaties from the Queen to intervene. Republic of Hawaii Fears grew among the Hawaiian whites of a U.S. intervention to restore the legitimate kingdom. A constitutional convention began on May 30, 1894 and the Republic of Hawaii was declared on July 4, 1894, American Independence Day, under the presidency of Sanford Dole. In the 1895 counter-revolution, a group led by Colonel Robert Nalin, Minister Joseph Nawahi, members of the Royal Household Guards and later Robert Wilcox attempted to overthrow the Republic. The leaders including Lily Wokalani were captured, convicted, and imprisoned. American Territory Annexation to the United States In March 1897, William McKinley succeeded Cleveland as president. He agreed to a treaty of annexation but it was not approved by the Senate because petitions from the islands indicated lack of popular support. A joint resolution was written by Congressman Francis G. Newlands to annex Hawaii. In 1897 the Empire of Japan sent warships to Hawaii to oppose annexation. McKinley signed the Newlands resolution which annexed Hawaii, illegally in the opinion of annexation opponents, on July 7, 1898 creating the territory of Hawaii. On February 22, 1900 the Hawaiian Organic Act established a territorial government. He appointed Dole as territorial governor. The territorial legislature convened for the first time on February 20, 1901. Hawaiians formed the Hawaiian Independent Party, under the leadership of Robert Wilcox, Hawaii's first congressional delegate. Plantation Era Sugar plantations in Hawaii expanded during the territorial period. Some of the companies diversified and came to dominate related industries, including transportation banking and real estate. Economic and political power was concentrated in what were known as the Big Five Corporations. Attack on Pearl Harbor Pearl Harbor was attacked on December 7, 1941 by the Empire of Japan, triggering the United States entry into World War II. Most Americans had never heard of Pearl Harbor, even though it had been used by the U.S. Navy since the Spanish-American War. Hawaii was put under martial law until the end of the war. Democratic Party In 1954 a non-violent revolution of industry-wide strikes, protests and other civil disobedience transpired. In the territorial elections of 1954 the reign of the Hawaii Republican Party in the legislature came to an abrupt end, replaced by the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Democrats lobbied for statehood and gained the governorship from 1962 to 2002. The revolution also unionized the labor force, hastening the decline of the plantations. Statehood President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed the Hawaii Admission Act on March 18, 1959 which allowed for Hawaiian statehood. 
After a popular referendum in which over 93% voted in favor of statehood, Hawaii was admitted as the 50th state on August 21, 1959. Sovereignty Movements For many native Hawaiians, the manner in which Hawaii became a U.S. territory is a bitter part of its history. Hawaii territory governors and judges were direct political appointees of the U.S. president. Native Hawaiians created the Home Rule Party and seek greater self-government. Hawaii was subject to cultural and societal repression during the territorial period and the first decade of statehood. Along with other self-determination movements worldwide the 1960s Hawaiian Renaissance led to the rebirth of Hawaiian language, culture and identity. With the support of Hawaii Senators Daniel Anu and Daniel Akeka, Congress passed a joint resolution called the Apology Resolution. It was signed by President Bill Clinton on November 23, 1993. This resolution apologized to native Hawaiians on behalf of the people of the United States for the overthrow of the Kingdom of Hawaii on January 17, 1893, and the deprivation of the rights of native Hawaiians to self-determination. The implications of this resolution have been extensively debated. Akerka proposed what is called the Akerka Bill to extend federal recognition to those of native Hawaiian ancestry as a sovereign group similar to Native American tribes. See also List of conflicts in Hawaii, List of missionaries to Hawaii, National Register of Historic Places listings in Hawaii, Timeline of Honolulu. Notes References Further reading, Dawes, Gavin. Shoal of Time, A History of the Hawaiian Islands. University of Hawaii Press. ISBN A0-8248-0324-8. Ralph Simpson Kukendall, 1938. Hawaiian Kingdom 1778-1854, Foundation and Transformation. Volume 1. University of Hawaii Press. ISBN A0-87022-431 Exa, Ralph Simpson Kukendall. Hawaiian Kingdom 1854-1874, 20 Critical Years. Volume 2. University of Hawaii Press. ISBN A978-0-87022-431 Exa, Ralph Simpson Kukendall. Hawaiian Kingdom 1874 1893, The Kalakaua Dynasty. Volume 3. University of Hawaii Press. ISBN A978-0-87022-431 Bowel. Sarah. Unfamiliar Fishes, Riverhead, New York, 2011. External links, audio of Dwight D. Eisenhower Hawaii Statehood Proclamation Speech, Public Law 103-150, Scots in Hawaii, How Spain Cast Its Spell on Hawaii, by Chris Cook in the Islander Magazine, History of Hawaii, The Pocky Key, Portuguese Traditions in the Islander Magazine, Today in Hawaii History, Russians in Hawaii. Hawaii History Community Learning Center. Retrieved May 12, 2010. Uh, the French in Hawaii. Hawaii History Community Learning Center. Retrieved May 12, 2010. Uh, significant dates in the history of Hawaii. Hawaiian Historical Society. Retrieved May 12, 2010. Uh,